Hi, welcome to Harley Classics. Um, we're at the 2023 London to Brighton Bar Run. We're in Hyde Park in London and we're just about to go. And we're off. Well, we're not off really because we're just heading to the start line, but it's quite a drive down here, so we're off to the start line. And if you're wondering why we're right at the back, it was because I registered too late. A little bit of a traffic jam on the starting line. And it's not just cars that do the run, as you can see, it's penny farthings. Now my god, would you like to go 60 mile on a penny farthing? And there's some big hills to go down. That's a bad going up them. Very, very stressful going up them. But coming down them, no brakes. Oh, no way. Right, look at all the people lining the sides here. This is what makes the run. All these people took the effort to get here this morning and watch us all come out of Hyde Park. It's fantastic. And not a stop oil protester anywhere. And this is what makes the run. Not just the cars, it's the people. It's all the people that line the route from here to Brighton that have made the effort to come here, to smile, to wave. This is what it's all about. Even people that haven't came to watch it specifically, I mean, they're going to smile and wave when they see these cars, why wouldn't you? Made the start line? We made the start line, it's the finish we need to make. You never know. <laughs> Yep, well he's the first car that's overtook us. Not sure whether it's a Cadillac, but it's away. And the second one that's just overtook us. I hope, I hope this is not going to be a start of things to come. We're just getting started, we're just getting warmed up. Literally getting warmed up, because she looks like she's getting a bit hot already, but there you go. And we're just coming down here now, uh, and we're going to pass Buckingham Palace. Hopefully the king will be out of bed, and this is the way to see Buckingham Palace on a car built in 1903. In, in fact, an open top car is the best way to see all the sights in London. Right, standing here now, and oh god, yeah, there's a steam coming off the car. Uh, and I don't think it's just the overflow, I think the car's getting really hot. Um, it's, it's the traffic, we came out of London late and we're just stuck in, in traffic nose to nose and it's not doing it much good um, hopefully we'll get round here at the bottom of Nelson's Column and uh, get away over Westminster Bridge but you can see all the steam coming off the car and it's not good the thing is with these cars they, they weren't designed for traffic because when these were built there was no traffic well, the odd horse but there was no traffic like what there is today. And certainly not uh, at quarter nine or half eight or whatever time it is in the middle of London on a Sunday. Let's hope we get moving quick so we can get this car killed down because there's no fan on the car so we're just relying on air blowing in the front of it so the quicker you go, the cooler it gets. And we aren't going quick anytime soon.
I mean, come on, where else in the world can you drive past Big Ben in a, an open top car? I mean, look at this, fantastic, all the same you see. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime, it's a once in a lifetime achievement for me. I, I never thought I'd be that humble to be so lucky to do this, you know, to, to reach me, me goal and drive past Westminster and Big Ben. Look at that, man. It is unbelievable driving over Westminster Bridge in a, a 1903 car, got the London Eye there, Westminster Bridge, Big Ben, fantastic, please don't break down. Oh, he's all getting overtook again. First lap we did the run, this is where we got to. So we're going to do the next few meters, we've beaten our first attempt. So there's the RAC, all along the route you'll see RAC vans and wagons and they're there to be the first aid to these cars. There you go, there's a couple of vans there and there's a couple of cars there. Let's hope we don't have to use them. Right, been on the run for about an hour 45 minutes, uh, mainly stuck in traffic. I said the second gear there, it's a lot nicer in second gear but changing it from second to first, it's the hardest part. So we've got a bit of a problem with the gear change on the car because we've got the revs set a little bit too high. Can't knock them down uh, because the car won't tick over. Uh, and the, the rate we've got it running, it's very difficult to get it into gear. So it's a bit of a compromise really. Every junction we come to, we seem to be conking out and struggling to get it into gear. So it's not just the gear change issues why we've had to pull over. Uh, we're going to have to check the water. It's getting rather hot under the collar here. Where about? How far off you? Over here. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, and to the rescue, the RAC with the water. Um, <laughs> car's getting rather hot, so we'll cool it down with a bit of uh, water. And just like that, here's the H team pulling up in the Hardy van. Chief mechanic Mark in the passenger seat there, and I'm sure he's going to spring out here into action, and he's away. And there's nothing he can't fix. Uh, as Mark's worked for us for a couple of years now, he's really enthusiastic, a really clever guy, and he can fix anything from a 1903 uh, car to a transit van to a still saw to anything. So he's taking over from the RAC here and he's topping a bit of coolant in there. Uh, I don't know what else he's going to do. Work your magic, Mark. At least when you sat down here, you can watch all the cars pass you. You can watch all the cars who are uh, who were behind you come past you. So we've got the water filled up now, fuel filled up, and it's time to get back on the road. Hopefully it won't get as hot. Hopefully the traffic won't be as bad. Oh, sugar, that's not good. Oh, the clutch is gone. I think the clutch is slipping. Oh, I can't drive this. We're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to have another look at this one before we get away.
So Mark's just underneath now, trying to adjust the clutch. Um, we think it's it's moved on the adjuster, so he's under there trying to adjust it. Good job it's not raining; he'd be soaking. Well, we're back on the road, it's worked for now, but I don't know for how long. I don't think we've got another adjustment in it, either the clutch or me, to be fair. Oh, there's another one broke down. As long as it's not me, famous last words. How are you getting on? Uh, it's getting hot and hot under the collar. Me and me. Me and me. Yeah, it's just all the traffic lights, man. There's a million traffic lights. Right, we've just been overtook there by Jim Clark. Uh, don't worry, Jim, I'll get you back, mate, because this can pull up the hills, I'm telling you. Jim's a big enthusiast from uh, from up north, so us northerners have got to stick together. Always comes over, comes down every year and brings his uh, American pals. They all come over from America, take part in the run, big family of them. Finally, a bit of open road. Christ, we need it, and the car can perform. I can't wait. Honestly, it might cool itself down. You know what I mean? Getting plenty of air up, but then there you go. Bye bye, Jim. Bye bye. In your fancy banner. And we're only in second gear. This car's got three gears, and I purposely blocked the third gear off because, to be fair, I'm a bit scared of it when it's in top gear. It's that quick. And this is the view that you get from our support vehicle, the H-Team. Head of the H-Team, Tank. Tank's one of our drivers who works for us in my construction company and has given up his time to come down here, uh, basically volunteer to drive the service vehicle. So good on your Tank. You're doing a smashing job, mate. Thanks very much. Oh, the car's driving a lot nicer now. I'm so pleased we're out of London. We're not out of the woods yet, but it's driving a lot nicer now. We get a bit of speed up without the traffic. However, we're not even a third of the way there yet. But at least we're out of London. Sorry? This is Red Hill. And they don't call it Red Hill because it's flat. This is one of the hills on the run. I think there's three or four big hills, and this is the first one.
and I don't think I'm going to be stopping at many traffic lights because my clutch is starting to fail a little bit difficult now so I'm just going to have to try and chug along best I can and pray that the traffic lights change before I get to them uh, I haven't got a lot of brakes either I think the transmission brakes on its way out and my handbrake uh, he's sitting on the other side just uh, waiting to pounce at the traffic lights because he'll have to hold us on the lights Hey, up, there's another one. The car loves hills, it loves hills, it just doesn't love starting on them. But powering up hills in first gear, I can overtake most things. It's just trying to get it into second, that's the problem. Not much of a stop at Crawley. We're just going to get our card stamped and then uh, get on our way again. Just stopping to top up with uh, oil and petrol uh, and the coolant, of course. To um, run out of oil in this car would be absolutely criminal. It's got a couple of drippers on the front, so we've got to stop every what 10 mile or so. With Tyler topping the fuel up there, Mark's topping the oil up and checking things under the bonnet and. Uh, Tanks just standing there, pointing. Yeah, we're cracking on now. We're getting a bit closer to Crawley. Crawley's uh, considered a halfway stop. It's a little bit more than halfway. Um, like I say, hills aren't a problem for this car. It loves hills. Uh, we'd probably be better off doing the Alpine run to be fair so what it does love is, is hills and what it doesn't love is traffic so please don't don't be much traffic in Crawley after last year I think there was quite a bit of traffic there if I can remember halfway this year is at a theatre um, it was in the Crawley town centre I think uh, a couple of years ago when I did um, you'll probably see cars coming the other way because they've been refueled and uh, had a bike to eat or whatever but all I want to do is a quick pit stop to check the car and then we'll be off again. We're pulling into halfway here, we've just come off the roundabout uh, hopefully get our card stamped on the way out or in not really know because I've never been here before as you can see the big banner on there Cars, uh, cars are a transport company that we've just used recently to export the car. Um, very good company, I uh, would highly recommend them. directed here where to pull up um, cars are stopping for a rest people are stopping for a rest cup of tea toilet stop for me quick check of the oils and fuel and water and I'll be on my way ain't got time to stop Oh, 
Shell? Ah. You clutch, you held, you gaze. Yeah. Oh. And this is what it's like on the inside. Not that I saw much of it like. It's too busy trying to get sorted myself out and get back on the car and get back on the run. Because it's uh, one o'clock and I'm pushed for time. You leaving Crawley then? Yeah, just leaving Crawley. Long stop or not? We've just got our card stamped there at the halfway crawley and we're just out here now. There's about halfway to go, 30 miles or something like that and the biggest hills are yet to come. So we've been on the road about, I don't know, five hours, something like that. We set off at half eight this morning. So it doesn't seem like we're getting very far, 30 miles, but let's hope we can make Brighton before four o'clock. I think half four is the cutoff, but I'd like to be there before four. So we're passing all the cars stopped at the side of the road. We don't know whether they're broken down or they're just doing a pit stop. Um, it's not a very good sign when somebody's lying underneath one, but uh, somebody was lying underneath ours at the beginning, so you can't say that. And just like that, it's us at the side of the road. I've uh, got to take the headlamp off the front as it's been vibrating and it's just going to explode. Back on the road, and I can't keep up with that one. And I definitely can't keep up with that one. That's a fact. Driving through the little towns and villages out the city centre. It's the people who make it. Everybody's happy to see you. They're waving, cheering. It's great, man. It's a fantastic atmosphere. Unbelievable. You know anyone who fills them? Back to the support beagle, we've got young Tyler in the front there, Mark's son, doing a bit of filament in between everything else. He's uh, certainly been an asset to this run and I hope he does the next one because uh, I need somebody like him, somebody young with a bit of enthusiasm and he's uh, certainly got plenty of that. Oh dear, and now from horsepower to manpower. I hope we don't have to do that because uh, I've only got half a man to be up beside us and two women in the back, but there you go. I love saying this, 
old cars fiddling, filling up with the modern petrol station. It's nuts in it. Absolutely nuts. Look at it, man. It's great. Miles or so off. 15 miles to go. Two big hills in our way. Yeah. Or what? I'm not sure. Pull over to do our last fuel and uh, check on the car. Uh, we're going to get pulled over and sort things out before we hit uh, one of the big hills left. Yeah, yeah. Top the water up. Top the oil up, check the drippers, and obviously check the fuel, and we'll be off again. I can on. Thank you. Sugar free as well. Hopefully, this is the last time we're going to stop. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. Look at Tyler, man. He's a proper help. He's as good as a man. Oh well, the car does pull up hills well, but uh, we'll see how well when we pull up Clayton Hill next. There it is, Clayton Hill. Pull up through the hardest test for the car. Clayton Hill, for those who don't, don't know it on the run, it's a big long sweeping hill and it's the kiss of death for veteran cars, honestly. But once you get to the top, you've cracked it, it's just a big long cruise into Brighton, well, hopefully. But before we go down the hill, we've got to get up it. If we get stuck up Clayton Hill, there is some support vehicles to pull us up, but uh, I don't think this car's going to need it. We're doing all right, you know. We're pulling up where you're okay. Plenty of power. Oh dear, that one's getting towed. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's getting towed up there with a four wheel drive. We're doing all right, like I say, we're pulling up all right. Oh god, what's that in front? And that looks like the RAC or whatever. And that one's broken down, so that one's getting loaded in a trailer. So that isn't good. Better than us. Clayton Hill, So 
we're down we're coming down Clayton Hill now and we're gonna be coming on the jail carriageway but believe me there's nothing good about coming down on a jail carriageway in a nineteen oh three car. At least it's coned off this year, which is great for us. But at the end of it you've still got to get in that middle lane and that is scary. Bet you're glad your lane's coned off. Oh, we did this one year. Well, that's it. We've waved the support team bye bye, and it's a straight run into Brighton. So, any problems, it's over to you, Bamba. Or in this case, over to me. Talk about tortoise and the hare, that car was the first car over the line this morning at 7 o'clock. And the guy in front of me now has had a flat tyre for the last 30 miles. So what the hell he's doing, I have no idea. Oh god, this is all I need. I'm starting to overheat, my clutch is going and I'm behind a penny farthing. Oh my god, please get out the way. I can't stop, I've got no brakes and I need to get to that finish line. I know you do as well, but for god's sake man, how are penny farthing, get out the way, please. Oh my God, I can't believe it, we've broken down, Jesus, we were so close to the finish line, I can't believe it, honestly, and the clock is ticking, the throttle is stuck on full, I've sent my support team to the finish line, I'm going to have to fix this one myself, and quickly, because I'm running out of time. Throttle is. yeah, so we think, somewhere down here, the throttle linkage is stuck on. Good night, could you? I said, didn't it? I said, you push it for a minute. You might have to. You're not a mile, are you? Yeah. Well, I say mile, it's probably about half a mile now. Doesn't seem as funny now when all the cars you've just overtook start passing you. It's not so funny now, is it? Shoes on the other foot. So close, but so far. Got to hope I get this fixed. Still, there are worse places to break down. But I don't want to break down. And I don't want to not finish the run. Not this far from the end. Even if I've got to get the girls and party to push us. Uh, I'm going to do this run. Well, I've gotten that fixed. God almighty. Two cable ties and a wing of prayer. Bit of duct tape and I'm away again. Managed to bodge the throttle, two cable ties. Hopefully, we'll get there. But we've only got about 15 minutes. Yeah, that was close. The tube that came, comes off the manifold, the 
shoulder. Come on. Come on. We're getting really, really close to the cut-off time here. I've got to get to Brighton. Got to get to that safe front. Got to get to that finish line. I'm so close, it's not even half a mile. If I've got to push it, I'll do it. But the time's ticking, the clock's running, the hair's going, and I've only got five or ten minutes left. That's the end. We've run out for the last few minutes to get there. We've all the to get it by the string, literally. But we can see it. Here's the killer traffic. God, I'm sat here waiting on the finish line. Please, please, just let me drive over. I'm overheating. I can feel the clutch coming up. We're gonna, we're gonna have no clutch. As soon as we get over that line, we've got no clutch. I can tell you now. Even if we've got to just push the car over, I'm going over that line. Come on, hurry up, please. Interview them. You don't have to interview me. I just want to get over the line, please. We didn't film this bit, but this is where we broke down. This is where we broke down just after the finish line. The clutch has gone. The car has died. Patrick's got a bump starters in gear to get it going. No word of a lie. As soon as I got the other line, you look down there. How was, how was it? What, the run? Yeah. Well, the run was good, yeah. A few breakdowns, but what do you expect? You know, alright, like I say, I've burnt the clutch out. Uh, when did you burn the clutch out? Well, we had problems with the clutch when we got about five miles out of the uh, 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 day. It's very good from the money all the way, right on the finish line. I felt it good, and we just got over the finish line. And then when we, when we went to get the, the winner's medal thing, or whatever it's called, then uh, gone. Shot. Gone. So, clutch, what had any other problems? Uh, yeah, uh, clutch, the problem with the spark plugs, we had to change them, uh, boiling over a bit, and, uh, as we got into Brighton, about half a mile away from the, uh, the finish line, the inlet manifold decided to depart itself from the manifold, so we were on full throttle, so that wasn't good. 
people. Two cable ties saved the job, so anyway, we've done it. Team Hardy, Mark Langham, Head of Logistics, Mark Shipley, Head of Mechanics, and there he is, Tyler Shipley, number one apprentice, and the and Peter Eater. <laughs> Well done, team, Hardy, eh? Yeah.